Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Claudia ought to be coming home any minute, wouldn't you say, Mother? I should think so. It's after six, but you know the theater. Clocks don't matter. I wonder how it's going. I've been wondering all day. Must have been a pretty exciting day for her. She's dreamed of it a long time, having a part in a professional play. I hope it's a good one. I... Say, am I acting like a stage mother? You are. <laughs> it's very becoming. It's almost worse than having a baby. I know what you mean. I do wish she'd come. There isn't even anything interesting to read in the papers. <laughs> you wouldn't know it if there were. <laughs> hey, Claudia, is that you? Wife. Uh-oh, the theater's got her already. Come on in here, darling, and give us your autograph. With pleasure, with pleasure. I'm just going to leave my pocketbook in the hall. How did it go, Claudia? I'm coming, I'll tell you everything. Well, go on, begin. We're all ears. How was it? David, you've forgotten something. So soon? You haven't kissed me alone. How can I forget to kiss my favorite actress? Come over here, Sarah Bernhardt. No, on second thought, Lillian Russell. Hmm? I don't want a stage kiss, either. Hmm. I want one just like that. Hello, Mama. Hey, I missed you all day. How are you? Bursting with curiosity. How did it go? You look all right. Didn't you miss me at all? Of course we did. Of course. Now tell us. What happened? David, was it roasting in New York? Who cares? I care. How you are is more important to me than any old play. Well, I are fine now. If you won't tell us how it went, we'll draw our own conclusion. Ooh. Must have gone well, Mrs. Brown, or she wouldn't be so concerned. Huh. She's going to be impossible from now on. I know it. You're right. It was wonderful. I actually got up on the stage and read my part. Well, what kind of part is it? I'm going to see the baby now. He's asleep. Did he take his orange juice all right? They're yeah, fine. Now tell us. Can what... I see him? I won't wake him up. Please. Later, what kind of part have you? Well, I'm a young girl. Mm. The youngest sister of a very wealthy and attractive divorcee. Played by Victoria Manners, no doubt. Oh, she's beautiful. Horfords and Bertha, did Fritz do anything about getting the cow? No, not yet. And dinner, what about dinner? I, I, listen, I ought to go say hello to Bertha. Too. Claudia, stand still. Was Jim Barney pleased with you? Well, he, he seemed to be. Mama, listen, is the baby all right? That's a warm day. Now, stop worrying, darling. Everything is perfect. Uh, what did Jim Barney say? He said she was magnificent. Oh, well, I'd better be good. I'm going to be good in this part if it's the last thing I do. If you're not good in it, it probably will be the last thing you do. <laughs> I'll show you. Oh, David. Mama, you have no idea how exciting it was. Backstage. Theater again. I think she'd spent the better part of her life in Grease Paint. You know, when I got on the stage today, I felt as if I had. It was the queerest thing. Maybe being married is what did it. Huh? Oh, David, I... I loved you more when I was standing on that stage kissing the leading man than I ever did before. Well, that's reassuring. How long till dinner, Mama? Kissing and dinner are always in the same breath. Dinner's not for an hour yet. We weren't sure when you'd get home. Oh, or I'm starving. That gives you time to study your part. It's terribly important that you learn it by heart as soon as possible. You can't really act when you're holding a script in your hand. <laughs> You'd better get right down to your work. No, can't I see the baby? You want to be a success? You work. Oh. Do you have a lot to memorize? Pages and pages. Well, I couldn't do it. Of course you could. Memorizing's very easy. By the way, what's the name of this play? Um, it's uh, called Summer Love. What is Summer Love? Summer Love is the play. I never heard of such a thing. Well, when you see the play, you will have. You see, it all takes place in the summer. Oh, oh that explains everything. It opens on a terrace. It's late afternoon. The sun's rays are standing across the stage. They throw part of the terrace in shadow. See? Mm. It is a modern, obviously expensively decorated terrace. A uh, chair here, um, sofa over there, glass tabletop there. Anne Morris is discovered sitting in a blue glider, lower stage right. I'm Anne Morris. Are you going to do all of this out loud? Well, I have to get in the mood of it. Oh. <clears throat> Anne Morris is reading. But after a few minutes, she drops the magazine on her lap and dreams. Well, start dreaming. Hush up, Mama. You're not the director. For a moment, I forgot. Now, now I'm dreaming. 
Enter up stage left, Guy Fitzgerald. Handsome debonair, 31-ish, wearing a well-cut tweed suit. Uh Uh-huh, that's me. Describes me to a T. He pauses. He looks it down. He starts to say something. Changes his mind, turns to go, and looks up. Sees him as he's about to leave through the French door, stage center, and speaks. Guy. Wonderful, wonderful. That's a marvelous reading. (laughs) Wonderful. (laughs) David, shut up. You make me self-conscious. But it was wonderful, really wonderful. It had real quality and timbre. Didn't it, Mother? Let her go on, David. All right, by all means, go on. Guy, there's no reason why we can't talk to each other, is there? Direct little girl, isn't she? A real hussy. It's tight cast. Guy turns around, faces Anne for a moment, drops a cigarette, stamps it out with his foot. A man of few words. A strong, silent type. <laughs> and rather untidy. You're not angry with me, are you, Guy? She pauses. I'm sorry if what I said last night disturbed you, but don't be angry. It's terrible for two people to be angry with each other. Claudia will learn a great deal from doing this part, Mother. A great deal. Mm. Guy takes a few steps down towards stage right. He looks at Anne for a moment and he says, Here, Deb, you read this. No, part. Okay. Sir. Come on, come no, on, don't be shy. Sir. No, sir, go oh, on. I'm not on. an actor now. Please, David. It'll make it much easier for me. Well, all right. Here, Just look, for we, you, we can read the script together, see? Mm-hmm. All right, here I go. <clears throat> no, Anne, I am not angry. David, you're wonderful. <laughs> you should be an actor, too. Now, now go on, go on. Now, now read your line. Um, that's good. When you didn't speak to me, I thought you were. <clears throat> I couldn't be angry with you. See, what's so You know, I like this? the guy. Oh, pardon the pun. <laughs> this is me now. I'm glad. I never want to do anything that would make you angry with me. You never will. By the way, have you seen your sister, the cad? <laughs> Wait a minute. Now. Oh, oh yes, I saw her. She came in from the pool. She went upstairs. Um, Andrew stayed center through French door. Stephanie, that's my sister. Come on, Mama. Come on, you read the part. I will not. Come, come on, on, don't come be shy. Listen, oh, we no. won't criticize. Mama will give you a much better idea of what the play is oh, about. But I don't want to read the it's part. It's not a matter of wanting. You're drafted, Mama, for drafted? Claudia's sake. Oh, all <laughs> right. But just because my daughter wants to be an actress and make a fool of herself, I have to make a fool of myself. Here, here are the lines, Mama. Now, remember, you're Stephanie. That means 30-ish, sort of stunning, worldly. You know, you please all men. Well, this mm. should be fun. I'll give you your cue now. <laughs> she came in from the pool and went upstairs. No, I didn't. I'm right here. Hello, Guy, darling. Mama, you're stupendous. She's Bravo. She's Lynn Fontaine, No, David. no, no. More like uh, Greer Garth. Oh, yes, that's hush it. up. That's it. You're disturbing my train of thought. Where was I? <laughs> um, hello, Guy, darling. I'm so glad you have come back. <clears throat> You know, I wouldn't have stayed away, Stephanie. I couldn't stay away. That's the way I like to hear you talk, my great big man. Oh, darling, there is so much I have to tell you. Hmm? And, sweets, would you mind? <laughs> yes, I would. I'd mind terribly. It's about time I had a chance to... At that moment, the upper stage left. And her Bridget, typical Bridget? Irish maid, about 30. Mrs. Norton, you're home. Martha, you're <laughs> just on time. I am on time? Yes, we need a Bridget. You need a who? An Irish maid. Oh, uh, we do not need a maid around here. It is not too much work for me. <laughs> Claudia yes. needs you in the play now, Bertha. What? It's a part for you. Oh, I don't act. I just cook. You're acting now. Now, come on, come on, Bertha. Oh. Come over here. Hear your lines right here. But what goes on here? Now, don't ask. Just do as you're told. Oh, you're supposed no. to say, dinner is served. But dinner is not served. It is not served yet for a well, half hour. Bertha, just say it. And with an Irish accent, Bertha. Oh, now you make fun. You're right. You're absolutely right. That's what theater is, making fun. Isn't it wonderful? <laughs> Come on, now. You're supposed to say, dinner is served. <laughs> yeah? I, I say it. Good. It doesn't take... Much of an actress to say that. Uh, uh, dinner is served. Oh, oh, yes. oh it's my line next. Um, thank you, Bridget. We'll be right in. At that moment, from downstage right. More people keep coming in. Enter Sir John St. Evans, a friend of Stephanie's who lives next door on the adjoining estate. Sir John says... But I have been oh, looking for... Oh, excuse me, please. Fritz, we were just going to get you. Here, you be Sir John. I be what? 
Uh, here's your part here. We're just rehearsing the new play I'm in. Oh, you're rehearsing a play? Yeah. Well, in the old country, I was a fine actor. Oh, Fritz, always bragging. Well, was I not, Mama? Don't call me Mama in front of everybody. You better call her Bridget. That's her name now. Here are your lines, Fritz. They're British English. Oh, that's not so easy, but, but I try. Let's try. Stephanie, my lady. Oh, I'm sorry. I did not know you had other company. Come right in, Sir John. My sister and my fiancé are no company. Uh, dinner is served. Stephanie, yeah. my love, I didn't know you knew Sir John. She's known him, well, for a long time, Guy. Oh, yes. We had had many a jolly old time together. You have? It's not what you think, Guy. Uh, dinner is served. Good. Stephanie and Guy, Sir John, if you will excuse me, I'll go to my room. Go ahead, sweet. And exit center. That's all. That's where well, I... Well, wait a minute. We can't stop right here in the middle now. We can't. No. How are we going to know what happened? Right. Oh, this is a very interesting play, yeah, Bertha? Yeah. Well, what does it all mean, Fritz? Well, we will see. Now, come on, Mother. Quick, take your place. Guy, don't look at me like that. There's no point in going on. I'm not in this no, anymore. Hush up. Uh, how should I look at you, Stephanie? <laughs> Dinner is served. <laughs> oh, come now, old boy. It was nothing serious. Am I ever going to have a chance to work at my script? Oh, it is fun to be an actor. It is not work. Well, it is easier than cooking. It comes very naturally to me. I think I'll call, call up Varney and apply for the job the first thing in the morning. But I, 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 I'm supposed to be the actress in the family. Well, we are trying to help. Yeah, to help you learn. We all help you. So you'll be big success and we be big oh, proud. You're sweet, all of you. You're the most wonderful actors I've ever met. And the most wonderful people, too. No wonder I'm so talented and so very happy. Here, here, a curtain speech. <laughs> and now, on with the rehearsal. Yeah, but Mrs. Norton, by now dinner is ready, and even actors have to eat. Whether you lunch alone or your noonday meal is shared with half a dozen others, ice-cold Coke is always a welcome addition, especially if you're eating out of doors picnic style. Get Coca-Cola by the case from your grocer or service station attendant, and there'll be enough on ice to enable you and your guests to lunch refreshed every day of the week. The rehearsal, it went good, yeah, Mr. King? Yeah, Fritz, it did. I like it. It is nice for all of us. Uh, Mrs. Norton, uh, she is an actress. Well, I'm glad you're all enjoying it so. I think she'd be fine actress if she is as talented at the theater as she is at home. Well, about that, we're going to find out pretty soon. Yeah, we all go to the theater. First thing on Monday, to eavesdrop on a rehearsal. Good. I will be there. Well, have a nice weekend, Mr. King. Same to you, Fritz, and many more of them. As I was about to say, every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again Monday at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. The parts of Claudia and David on this program were played by Catherine Bard and Paul Crabtree. And the entire production is supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. And now, here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. <laughs>